On the 2nd of May, California used only renewable energy for the entire day. The following day, 103% of the state's energy needs came from renewable energy only. Hello my friends, welcome to the channel. This is the future of the planet. Renewable energy is the future and that's why I'm so excited. California is definitely leading in this area in the US and in fact globally. They are one of the most successful countries at transferring from fossil fueled energy to renewable sources. In early April, the state achieved a new record, 97.6% renewable power. On the 2nd of May, they reached 99.9%. On the 8th of May, the record was broken again with 103%. Clean Technica says that this landmark moment highlights the viability of renewable energy on a large scale, proving that governments of all sizes have the capability to invest in the future of our planet. If it were an independent nation, California's 3.14 trillion economy would be fifth largest in the world. So yeah, this is pretty damn relevant. While state leadership played a significant role in this accomplishment, local governments made important contributions that led to California's success this spring. City leadership on renewable energy hit an all-time high in the last year, having more than doubled the amount of clean energy power deals made in the previous year. To set our sights on a fully carbon future though, there's still work to be done to make sure that clean energy is available at all times. If you've been watching this channel, you would know, right? The cost of energy storage is going to go down enormously. One of the key reasons, right? LFP batteries, sodium batteries, and improvements in energy density. This is what will help California when the sun isn't shining and the wind isn't blowing. California must still rely on fossil fuels to meet its energy demands right now, but that will change within only a few short years. Large scale battery projects are essential to providing clean energy around the clock, allowing solar power generated during the day to be stored and used after sunset. California has invested in massive efforts to scale up the grid's storage capacity in recognition of this need. And battery storage in California has already increased 20 fold since 2019. So in the space of less than three years, battery storage in California is has increased by a factor of 20. You see my point here, right? This is an exciting time to be alive. This is amazing news for people in California. These efforts have been aided by a 97% decrease in the production cost of batteries over the last 30 years. 97% decrease in the production cost of batteries over the past 30 years. That's what I keep crying on about. People are getting distracted by the daily news cycle. The daily news cycle saying batteries are more expensive this week or this month versus last month is an easy thing to get hung up on, right? To get caught up on the fact that, um, you know, batteries are more expensive this week than last week. Therefore, the world's coming to an end. Well, actually, what matters more than microeconomic trends are macroeconomic trends. That means, right, what we need to focus on is not what's happening today or last week, but what's happening over a year or two years or a decade. The US is home to one of the largest deposits of lithium, of which only 1% is currently being used. Sustainably extracting this resource is, of course, necessary to achieve the speed and the scale needed for the US to meet its climate goals. For California to achieve 24-7 carbon-free energy by 2045, or even by 2035, solar and wind projects will need to be built three times faster, and battery storage expansion will need to be developed eight times faster, which seems completely viable in my view. In addition to the trends in battery production described, the renewable energy industry is evolving to bring this goal well within reach. Clean power production in California has tripled since 2005. This is mostly due to increased cost efficiency in renewable energy. Over the past 10 years, the price of renewable energy has plummeted. Wind has become three times more affordable. Solar 
10 times more affordable. That makes it clearly more cost effective than any fossil fuel burning power source. That includes nuclear, guys. That includes coal. That includes gas. That includes anything. Solar and wind are cheaper. Recognizing the benefits to the economy, to the fifth largest economy in the world, and national security, President Biden announced new executive orders on June the 6th to invest in our planet by accelerating the transition to renewable energy in the US. And, you know, it's, it's not just an investment in the planet. It's an investment in logic. Why on earth would we want to be digging up fossil fuels when we don't need to be? We're simply spending more money on something when we can spend less, which makes more economic sense. It just, for me, it's a no-brainer. Biden authorized the Department of Energy to use the Defense Production Act to increase production of key components for solar panels while also lifting tariffs that form significant barriers to expanding the U.S. solar industry. That was a good move. This action is a significant and direct investment from the federal government to meet its climate commitments, which is likely to further fuel the progress seen recently in California and localities nationwide. These trends are accelerating all over the world. Solar tariffs in India, two cents per kilowatt hour. Solar tariffs in Morocco, 1.9 cents. Solar tariffs in Chile, two cents. What are the costs of coal? Around about six cents. Solar is way cheaper than coal now, today. Now, one of California's greatest assets is something not often talked about, and that's actually offshore wind generation. Not only does California have amazing offshore wind resource, but the hourly wind speeds are complementary to solar PV as solar winds, as winds dip during the middle of the day when solar peaks. And of course, they peak overnight when solar is offline. Now, currently there's a similar, but slightly different pattern in Texas, where offshore wind peaks during the afternoon and evening peak loads when solar output is falling and onshore wind is at its lowest. But this is the same in almost every country around the world, no matter where you live, right? There's always a way to combine these two energy sources together to be able to get nearly 24-7 renewable energy. And for those few hours when we might have a dip, well, battery storage is key. Most countries around the world, all we need is four hours of battery storage to cover that dip. It's not really all that much. As you can see, you know what? Don't listen to the doom and gloom. It's not true. The reality is the world is getting better. It will continue to get better. And frankly, the world we're going to leave our kids is going to be a far better one than we actually inherited. I know that's hard to believe because the news would like you to believe that everything's going to hell in a handbasket. We're going to burn to a crisp by, I don't know, 2050 or something like that, but it's not actually correct. Current trends in the renewable energy sphere, thanks to government incentives, thanks to industry efforts, mean, right, that yes, renewable energy will most certainly take over from fossil fuels. It's not a matter of if, it's simply a matter of when. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comment section below what you think. Do you agree? Do you disagree? And as always, have a great day. Bye-bye.